Amen. Who knows what happened 50 years ago yesterday? Shh, I didn't say what. I said, who knows? Who knows? Who was alive to witness it? Do you actually know what the first thing that happened, though, on the moon? I have three words. We'll get back to that in just a minute. I have three words for you this morning. The first one is... Pioneer, thank you. I've seen who's paying attention. What did I tell the kids? Pioneer, family, and deliverer. So pioneer is our first word, right? It says, God said he made him a pioneer to show us the way. The one who would suffer and draw everyone into a life with God. He made him to be a pioneer. Well, 50 years ago yesterday, we landed on the moon. Right? It started years of space exploration. And lots of things happened. But do you know what the first thing to happen in the lunar module was before they set foot on the moon? Anybody? Who said it? Somebody said it back there. Say it louder. Say it louder. Communion. Communion. Communion was celebrated on the moon when the lunar module landed before they even set foot. Do you know that? No. It's not a widely known fact. It was actually on the TV broadcast. If you watch the broadcast, it was actually on the broadcast with no mention of actually what it was. Right? In 1969, Edward Eugene Aldrin Jr., who you know as Buzz, was an elder at West Webster Presbyterian Church, a congregation just outside of Houston, Texas. He told the lead pastor, Dean Woodruff, that he had been struggling to find the right symbol for the first lunar landing. He wanted to express our feeling that what man was doing in this mission transcended electronics, computers, and rockets. Aldrin told that to Guide Post magazine in 1970. One of the principal symbols, Woodruff said, remember that's Buzz's pastor, one of the principal symbols is that God reveals himself in the common elements of everyday life. Right? In that time, the common elements, that's why we have bread and wine when we celebrate communion, because everybody had bread and wine for every meal. It wasn't like you were supposed to come together and do something special. Was every time that you gathered and sat down to eat with anybody, you would have bread and wine, and you were supposed to remember what God did for you. Right? It's such a special meal that you should do it all the time, every day. And Buzz's pastor said that God comes to us in the common elements of everyday life. And as he was working on getting ready to go to the moon, he noticed all these rockets, and it occurred to me that these tools, this is a, a quote from, from Buzz, it occurred to me that these tools were typical elements of life today, meaning the sophisticated tools of the space effort, the things that he was working with. And I wondered how it might be possible to take communion to the moon, symbolizing the thought that God was revealing himself there too, as man reached into the universe. For there are many of us in NASA program who do, who do trust that what we are doing is part of God's eternal plan for man. There are many of us in NASA's program who do trust that what we are doing is part of God's eternal plan for man. It's a direct quote from us all. So he talked to his pastor and he talked to the people. He wanted to make it publicly known in the, in the broadcast when they, when they did all of the stuff showing the people what was happening. But because of the Apollo 8 astronaut reading from the book of Genesis... And there was a lawsuit because of separation of church and state. The people at NASA told Buzz to lighten it up. They didn't say, don't do it. They just said, don't really say what you're doing. We can talk for hours on that right there. Right? You're supposed to live our faith out loud. That leads to the second one, where Jesus is not ashamed to call us brothers and sisters, right? So what do we do in the world to proclaim him to the world? But Buzz took with him bread wrapped in the regular wrapping that they had for their food. He had a small chalice that his pastor had given him and a, and a vial of wine. And before they got ready to get to do the actual walking on the moon, he unpacked these elements and he talked to 
Neil about something that he needed to do, and then he radioed back to, to NASA. And this is the message, and this was actually on the broadcast. Houston, this is Eagle. This is the LM pilot speaking. I would like to request a few moments of silence. I would like to invite each person listening in, wherever and whomever he may be, to contemplate for a moment the events of the past few hours and to, to invite each person listening to give thanks in his own individual way. After that, he read John 15, 5, not saying what it was. I am the bread, you are, I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever remains in me and I in him will bear much fruit, for you can do nothing without me. After that, it says, he poured the wine into the chalice, or the church had, his church had given him, and in the one safe gravity of the moon, the wine curled slowly and gracefully up the side of the cup, and it was interesting to think that the very first liquid poured on the moon and the first food eaten there were communion elements. And after taking those elements, Aldrin said, he sensed an especially strong, especially strong in my unity with our church back home and the church everywhere. The first thing that happened when, the, when they landed on the moon was the celebration of the meal that we're going to have here just in a little bit. It was a pioneer moment, not only in the fact that we landed on the moon, but the fact that the first thing that happened there is something to do with our faith, our beliefs, our love, and what God has given to us. And the fact that God is not ashamed to call us brothers and sisters, which leads us to the next word, family. How many of you have a family member when someone asks you, are you related to, you go, why do you want to know? <laughs> right? We all have one of those. We don't talk about those relatives. All right? Why do you want to know? But when someone goes up to Jesus and says, do you know Clyde? Jesus says, yes, he's my brother. Do you know, insert your name here. Yes, she's my sister. Jesus is not ashamed to call you a brother or a sister because of what he did for us. He came to live and to die, to show us how to live and to love God. He came to give us the love that God wanted to pour out into our lives and show us exactly who we are as his God-created children, heirs of the kingdom with Jesus. And Jesus says every time that he sees you, there's my sister, there's my brother, there's the one that God loves so much that I came to show you how to live. And through doing that, he died on a cross and delivered us from what? The reading said that they were afraid because of the power of death, right? How many of you are afraid to die? I'm not, don't raise your hands. How many of you think about that? There's people that I know in this room have dealt with the loss of a loved one recently. And you, you linger on that. And you worry about that. But here's the thing, in our reading this morning and all throughout all scriptures, it says that death no longer has power over the one who believes in Jesus Christ. Yes, you're going to die. Our bodies are physical, they're meant to, they're going to wear out. But our physical bodies, that's it. And it's not an end, it's a doorway, it's a step to the next part of our journey. It's, a, it's not something that we should fear because it takes us from this life and into the eternal presence always with God. Not that we're not always with God here. But it's a different place, a diff not a physically different place, but a different place and a different time and a different understanding. It's not something to be afraid of. And Jesus gives us the power to overcome worrying about whether or not we're, how long we're going to live in this body. Because no, how long, no, longer, how long, no matter how long we live in this body, God is always with us. And he came here to redeem us and to give us life forever with him. So remember that. And now that you know that the first thing that happened on the moon was communion, we need to let everybody else know that too. And not be ashamed of the fact that these things happen. We need to stand boldly in our faith and, and say it out loud how much God loves each and every one of us every day of our lives. And not hide behind something because somebody might get offended by it. You know what? Somebody's going to be offended just because you're there. And not because you're a Christian, just because they don't like the way you look that day. That's just the way the world is. We get offended at the drop of a hat. And we get offended by every last little thing. 
But we are called to live our life and our love and, and the faith that God has given us out loud. That's exactly what Buzz Aldrin did when he asked permission to do communion on the lunar module. It's a shame that the world didn't know that that happened until years later. But now that we know, we can make sure that everybody else knows. And we can make sure that everybody knows just exactly how much God loves you and how much God loves them by showing it through everything that we do in our lives. So be a pioneer following after Jesus. Know that you're always going to be a part of his family and that no matter what, that you've been delivered from the power of death because Christ died so that you could live eternally with God. And share that love with all of the world.